Hello and welcome to the Village Chapel on this Friday in the season after Pentecost. Let us pray. O oh God, your never failing providence sets in order all things, both in heaven and earth. Put away from us, we entreat you, all hurtful things, and give us those things which are profitable for us through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. When Jesus had come down from the mountain, great crowds followed him, and there was a leper who came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I do choose. Be made clean. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Then Jesus said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go. Show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Here we have one of the many examples of Jesus healing the sick. And in this case, it's a leper. And I think it raises the question, especially now in this time in our nation's history, when we seem to be so focused on a virus that has killed over 100,000 people in this country and around the world so many more. And it might raise the question to us, the same question that this leper asks Jesus. If you choose, you can make me well. And we as Christians believe that Jesus can heal anyone. And how often do we pray every day for the healing of people on a list that we all have who need to be healed. Well, we know some are healed, some aren't. And that leads us to a question, why? Why? What sense is there that some are healed, some aren't? Why why does God allow suffering and death, and especially untimely death in this world? Why? When we know that God is all-powerful and he could at any time save anyone and heal anyone, why not? And I can tell you as a pastor and a priest that that is the question that most people who are not believers, people who are atheists and agnostics or just skeptical about anything religious, that's always the first question. If there is a God, why does he allow children to die of leukemia? questions like that, for which there is no answer from our end. On this side of paradise, we don't have an answer to that. Well, we have to remember that at the time of Jesus, don't you know, when he was alive, there were people saying to him, why are you doing anything other than performing miracles? If you can perform miracles, just as Satan said, 
If you are the son of God, why don't you just heal everyone? Why does anyone have to get sick and suffer and die? Why don't you just heal everyone? The answer, I think, is that the gospel is simply not about therapeutic healing. The gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, is that God loves us more than we can possibly imagine and that our sins are forgiven and that nothing, nothing can ever separate us from the love of God through Christ. That's the good news. That's the gospel. And if all Jesus did was heal people, and he certainly did do that, but he did a lot more. But if that was all he did, then no one would have heard the message. They would have just been focused on a consequence of the message, but not the message itself. And that's why Jesus says to this leper after he's healed, don't tell anybody about this. And we see this throughout the Gospels. When Jesus does healings, he tells people, don't tell anyone about this. Why not? Because they would get the wrong message. They would mistake a consequence of the incarnation, the Word made flesh, a consequence of the good news of Jesus Christ for the message of that good news, which is your sins are forgiven and that nothing can ever separate you from the love of God through Christ. So Jesus says, don't tell anyone, don't tell anyone now because they'll get the wrong idea. And we might think about that today. What message are we sending out? There are a lot of causes in the world right now, a lot of good causes about helping the poor and healing the sick and uh, world peace and uh, civil rights and the environment and all these, other, all these things that are really good causes. But aren't they just consequences possible consequences of the message. Let's never forget what the message is. It is the good news of Jesus Christ, period. C.S. Lewis called it mere Christianity. And that's what we need to be proclaiming to everyone, how they respond to it in terms of world peace, the environment, civil rights, that's up to them. But our message as Christians has to be the pure, unadulterated, industrial strength gospel of Jesus Christ. That our sins are forgiven. That Jesus Christ came to save us. And he is our one and only Savior. Thanks be to God.